Hello and welcome to the Kundalini Podcast. That was Zen. This is Dao. I'm Vivek Govekar. Namaste. This is episode 117. And what am I going to talk about today? Recently, I came across an excellent quote, a very deep and profound quote by Eckhart Tolle. He's the one who's famous for writing the book, The Power of Now and others in that field. So the quote was, consciousness and thought can coexist in your mind, but one requires the other, whereas the other one is independent of its corollary. So consciousness is the canvas in which thought is contained. So for example, you have a vast sea and one person sitting in a boat rowing or a sailboat. So sailing is something he can do, right? Now, if you go and say to that person, hey, can you do anything besides sailing? Like that's, is that the only activity with a machine or a tool or using something, an instrument, a piece of equipment? Is that the only one? Of course, he'll say, don't be silly. Of course, I can do other things. I can ride a bicycle, I can walk, I can operate, you know, equipment that is needed like toaster, uh, a grinder, crusher, whatever it is, juicer in your uh, kitchen and then give it to people, like, you know, be a uh, host at a party, I can read a book and explain it to people, the story. It's a multifaceted being, is what I'm getting at. Rowing a boat in an ocean or riding a sailboat or a jet yard, whatever it is, jet ski. (laughs) It's just one activity that person can do. Now imagine that ocean being the consciousness and all these activities are being done and various aspects of a person's consciousness. One of them involves thought. One of them involves motor skills. One involves appreciation of a beautiful day at the beach. One involves smelling beautiful flowers and uh, being enchanted by the smell. And another one involves thinking, thought, the process of being involved in thought, being cognizant of it, having a mindful approach towards it. All of these are components contained within the entirety of the consciousness. Like many boats can sail in the same ocean. Again, people will say, don't be silly. There are not enough boats in, to be contained in the ocean, right? That humans can, can create because it's about two thirds water and just one third land on which humans live. So it's a vast ocean and you can have many boats. However, the boundaries of each boat are very well defined. You know, one boat is affected by the currents and another boat somewhere else, another part of the ocean has to face a storm. Some other part, it's a sunny day and it's all happening in the same ocean. And there are many, many thousands of boats sailing in it at the same time. So consider your consciousness, your awareness as a vessel containing many different types of ripples. Some are complex because you need require your motor skills, some learned skill that you're using to make tools, use tools to create something. Somebody, a sculptor, sculptor creating a statue, for example, requires knowing how to use the chisel and hammer and having a great understanding of the human anatomy and how to make that appear on that stone so the whole looks a certain way and have that whole image in your head and have the skills to manipulate the tools in the right way to get that effect. That's a complex action. That's something that requires more than just one thought or two. That requires a complex set of thoughts, chains, actions to be replicated, to be proficient at before you can even attempt something like this because it's an expensive piece of marble, let's say. And yet that same person who's making the statue can also go home and do other things and be completely at ease doing those things. Uh, uh, like working with kitchen utensils, <laughs> like uh, painting or drawing, complex functions. What happens when you have a Kundalini awakening and the 
way I have approached it and what I have done with it is you start seeing each thought or each action, feeling, response to a stimulus as a separate point. At advanced state, stages of mindfulness and meditation practice, what happens? How does it apply to your body in the physical reality? Like I've said before in one video, it's a laboratory. It's a place where you shut off your entire thinking apparatus and go into a nothing that is still within your consciousness, but you have chosen to focus on it. Who is doing the choosing? That's the I, the self. And who is witnessing this chaos of thoughts and has a technique now to bring them into control? His control. For that, you have to find out who is the he that is doing this, who is, what is the thought, what's the chaos and the boundary of the chaos, and what's the boundary of the person observing it. You have to be clear about these things. And meditation helps you reveal those facets from within. And now, it's like walking into a room. My self, after meditation, walks into a room, shuts that other room that I was in, which is meditation, alone time, come back and look at all these tools at my disposal. Because I'm in that much control, have that much confidence. Do I use a thought? Oh, there's another thought coming. What do I do with th this thought? Then somebody spoke to me in a certain way. It was meant to evoke a certain response. All of that is like coming from a distance, approaching you. And you have a choice whether to accept it or not. And in this case, you exercise that choice because you have been training a lot. <laughs> All that mindfulness training and meditation gives the self an identity of its own for the very first time. Because since we are born and nobody taught us to do meditation as a essential practice and how to do it and nobody ever bothered to give you those things as happens to most people now i was fortunate i had parents who taught me meditation at a very young age and yoga so the basic seed to use that when needed later in life was there accessible to me somewhere inside this brain cortex because remember the longer that thought has penetrated longer you have thought about it longer you have taken action to in that direction and done those things yoga and meditation the easier it becomes to access it again and the effects multiply and your proficiency multiplies the more you do it like with anything else i was fortunate since the age of 10 on and off i've been doing meditation or chanting without even knowing that i was doing those things because if you chant enough times <laughs> and in times of duress times of stress when you're facing danger oh, when you're worried about an exam that you're gonna appear for tests and you come out with flying colors then you're really happy you're like, wow, I could do this. This is amazing. So, all of those things are helped by a continuous practice of meditation and mindfulness, as I've said before, as a skill to be learned. And for that, what are the basics? Like, if you're riding a bicycle, somebody has to tell you, these are the pedals. You keep pedaling them and try to attain balance. Eventually, you do. Until then, people are holding and running behind you until you get the grasp of it, the hang of it. Then you start seeing the bicycle as something, ah, what can I do now? Your degrees of freedom, of freedom increase. Oh, before you could access maybe five miles a day, just using your legs. And now you can go 25 miles a day, 30 miles a day, because you have a tool at your disposal. <laughs> then you plan things. Oh, I, I'll make a trip to this place or that place. Oh, that's a reason reach, reaching, like, you know, easily reachable for me with my bicycle. So that's the same way with meditation and mindfulness. And these are the basics that I'm breaking. When you start noticing your own thought patterns, these are the things that will be revealed. So what's waiting for you if you're patient with your meditation and mindfulness practice and the approach that I have given? What becomes obvious to you? at an advanced stage or even an intermediate stage is the fact that you are in control of a lot of things within you that you had no idea you could in the past even identify, delineate from what is inherently you versus what was not and do something about it vis-a-vis -vis your control on those things. 
a function that is available to you, but you haven't used that muscle in a long time. And it can only be trained by a regular practice of meditation and mindfulness. This is how. I'm giving you the methods, the results, and the visualization that I have used. You are free to use it, but that's not the only way to do it. You'll find some other way and you'll use it for other things. That may be a part of your personal makeup and how your psyche uses those tools. But as a reference point, I can only give you my story and tell you what I have found since I started meditating and being mindful, assisted by a Kundalini awakening. The other way around, of course, Kundalini assists you. You have some tools at your disposal that you gathered haphazardly because they were being spoon fed to you by your parents. And then you're like, hey, thank God, I'm lucky. This is exactly what I would have needed. So thanks, mom, thanks, dad. <laughs> and thanks to Purushottam. Having said that, it is your practice your intent, you're not straying from the path you have chosen of mantras and uh, whatever chant you have decided. Initially, there will be stages where you're like, ah, today I'm not feeling lazy or oh, enough of this, I'm not doing this anymore. But you had written a timeline somewhere on a chalkboard somewhere. Oh, this whole year I'm going to do this. So this has happened to me in the past. When I was younger, I would start something and there would be so much pressure to not complete it. People trying to you know, throw you off track. That I started a simple trick. It is this. You write it down on a chalkboard and you make plans for the whole year. Last year I had made a plan, 2021, that I was going to take pictures on the first day of each month. And it could be pictures or it could be some other post, something to post on Instagram, one post a day of either a positive quote or a photograph. But typically, I would do it with photographs. Now, on December 1st, by that time, yes, I had been disciplined in the past, but certain things happened and shook my routine. And I wasn't even aware of photography or uh, doing something with my work, you know, whatever. When December 1st arrived, and I automatically, unconsciously, as habit, posted a positive quote on my Instagram. You can check it out by the way, Malibu, fine. But there was no photo posted that day. So then I realized, oh yeah, habit is only a habit if you keep coming back to it on a certain day that you have decided. So first create what is called a sankalpa or intent, which is I'm going to do this for such and such a period. If you said, I'm going to do it from January 1st, 2021, to January 1st, 2022. That's a finite goal that you can tackle. And you have a calendar and it has its timeline and you have written this down and you also write down things like okay so what obstacles you faced what days you missed but that helps you get to the 31st without ever thinking oh i'm just gonna give this up this is no longer working for me or anything i promised myself i'm gonna do it then i'm gonna do it so that's a lesson i learned when i was younger and i had you know friends like that who would uh, play mist it was all in good fun but you start have you start to create tools and tips for yourself, techniques. So that's what I would recommend people is uh, if you write down everything on a chalkboard that you can see every single day, it becomes that much easier with a finite timeline of what you're going to do and having a routine and being honest about yourself, your motivation and how long you stick to it. Once you go beyond the three, four, six month period, then it's a matter of pride. Then you have to do it. <laughs> then that also helps you get away from the ego because it's like okay you missed something don't be so so harsh on yourself ultimately the ego hurts you because it's self-critical always too harsh on yourself not loving enough and understanding enough to you the same understanding and love that you give to other people give it to yourself but within a framework of discipline that's what has always worked for me so i thought i'd talk about this thought consciousness discipline how to put a habit uh, all are interrelated subjects but there's a lot to be gained from having a disciplined practice of meditation and mindfulness. To find out your boundaries, your limitations, who you are as a person, and then to be able to work on those things. Hope you found this helpful. This is Vivek Govikar signing out. Peace, love, blessings.